let's let's hope Facebook um, is good this evening. There we go. Facebook has been a little tricky the past couple days, and it will like I'll have everything written up and everything will be great, and then it's just like it doesn't load. So I have to like go retype everything oh, again. No, it's no good. It's no good. Um, hello, everyone on Facebook. We'll just sit here and wait a moment. Yes. Um, will people show up? If you are here, give us a like or a heart to let us know you have arrived. Um, you know what? I was going to wear this vest, but I'm getting warm. I shut I shut all my windows and doors, so it wouldn't be quite as loud with like ambient noise. My refrigerator is enough. Um, so we are here once again at my never used dining room table because I eat alone and that depresses me, according to Dawn. <laughs> I meant to text you that my husband was out of town and and for like a week and I didn't go. You told me. To the, no. oh, did I tell no, you? No, you texted oh, me. Like, you're like, in my head, I was like, I have to text Jamie and tell him that I didn't go no. to it either. And but, so, but you will be very proud. I have had three meals in the past week. Sitting right there Yay. at that at that seat at the head of the table, I like eat and sit, and I'm like, it actually is different <laughs> sitting at an actual table instead of going like full Quasimodo over yes. there on my couch. Yes. So yes. you know what? Each day is a gift. Yes. Um, so we're here with Dawn uh, from Spectrum Speech and Feeding. Many of you know her as Miss Dawn from Easy Peasy. Uh, she is part of the Easy Peasy team, but she also has her own business. Uh, with speech pathology and feeding. Uh, so I will let her give you a little bit of about herself okay. um, and then we'll get going. Hi, I'm Dawn Winkleman. I'm a speech language pathologist and feeding specialist. You can find me at Spectrum Speech or at Miss Dawn, SLP. And I basically teach kids how to eat and encourage parents how to come up with different strategies and different techniques in order to handle whether they have a child that's just a picky eater or a medically fragile child or a kid who's on tube feeding or kids with sensory issues, autism, Down syndrome, the variety of medical issues, food allergies, etc. Uh, so if you're struggling with a child um, who really doesn't want to eat, uh, come to our live chats every single month. And yeah. um, you can always send this to a mom who's in need too. And we have a ton of questions that were left on Facebook Yay. today, uh, which is awesome. And that's one of the reasons we like doing this is because mm -hmm. we have this platform to get information out to you guys. So game on. Um, today's topic is making food fun. Yes. Um, and St. Patrick's Day is on the way. However, here in Denver, they celebrate it early. And I need to tell you, ah. I got off the train from coming home from Deerapalooza in Brooklyn the other night. I came home the next morning, walking home from Union Station, and I'm like, this entire parking lot is gated off with like urinals and tents. Like, what is going on? And I was like, it's St. Patrick's Day, but no, St. Patrick's Day is Friday. They celebrate it a week oh. early. They either do it on the Saturday prior, if it falls on like a work day, I guess. Oh. So I don't really understand newbie. So it was chaos downtown this weekend uh, because St. Patty's Day. So it was, it was a real treat. So we're really behind the times in Denver, but hopefully behind. ahead of the time mm -hmm. for you guys. <laughs> so what, what are we going to do today? So I just brought a variety of things like, you know, I do every single time. And of course, we'll take your questions. And, and I wrote a couple of questions when I first got mm -hmm. on this morning. I and saw I a couple of your questions. This phone too. And so I can try to answer some of them while I'm, while I'm going through um, some ideas and fun things. But I thought one thing that we want to do is to try to entice kids to be able to encourage them to try something new because that's the big thing, right? We always know that if they could just take that one bite, I know they'd like it, but it's getting them to actually take that first bite. And so as professionals, we constantly tell parents, make food fun, make food fun. Well, how do you do that? Do you do? It's food. <laughs> exactly. And how do you do that in the time that's allotted for you, right? Your parent, your child is screaming, you know, mommy, I'm hungry. And you have five seconds like to put something together. What can you do? And so um, I always tell parents, like, try to have a theme, try to have an idea. And so I just thought today we'll just kind of do some St. Patrick's Day stuff and just giving you some different ideas when I'm always like, find a theme, you know, um, that your child is into. If they're into Legos, then we want to try to, you know, go that route, um, doing things with Legos. So I just did green today, which happens to be my favorite. 
favorite color. So, um, so I just brought a, a new. Oh, this color. is new. This is a new color from Easy Peasy. Look at this. Ooh, it's sage. It's a good sage. Isn't minty that pretty? Green. Yes. Oh, it's yes. So pretty. So I just thought we'll just make a quick little St. Patrick's Day color theme. So I'm just going to take. Hold some on. Somebody's like, can we get CEUs for this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so as a therapist, <laughs> I wish. Um, my next CEU event is in September in Arizona, um, and it's all a whole day, eight hours on autism and feeding challenges. And so, we're doing that next month as well yes, for April. Exactly. April is Autism Awareness Month. Yes. So we have an entire. Yep. It's not an episode, but it is. It's an entire it's an episode. episode of this episode. dedicated to uh, autism and feeding. Yes. So, so see yous on that one. So I'm just going to take some yogurt and show parents just, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be, you know, exciting. You could just do a handful of cereal and some yogurt and two eyes. And you have a cute little... Leprechaun. So, and then you, you kind of bring it up with a theme. Instead of saying, Johnny, you know, breakfast is ready, you can say, Johnny, I have a leprechaun for you to eat. Now let's talk really quick. We brought this up. One thing I actually did not know at all about these mats was that these are directly related to portion sizes. Yes. So yes. let's talk about that really quick. Sure. Because I, I, yes. I thought I knew everything about this and I was wrong. So in our book, Making Mealtime Easy Peasy, uh, this goes through all the different portion sizes. So our eyes are four ounces and eight tablespoons or a half of a cup, and our smiley face is 10 ounces. And so if you look at the serving sizes for kids, let's just say two-year-old right now, um, basically a child that's two needs to have one cup of vegetables. And so it just makes it very easy for you to kind of figure this out. Well, if this is, you know, one and one-fourth cup, I'm good. Yeah. So it just kind of helps to give you an idea as a frantic mom when you're feeding kids and you're just trying to... I threw it in here. I threw exactly. it in here. Do some math. Exactly. There it goes. And for us therapists, um, if you're a feeding therapist and you're helping kids, and I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, what did Johnny eat? How much did he eat? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to track that. I can just look at it very easily and just go, okay, one ounce, one ounce, four ounces. Yeah. And then I can chart what that is. Or if you're a parent and you're counting calories because you're trying to get your child off a feeding tube or you're trying to prevent your child to get onto a feeding tube, the medical team is going to always ask you how many ounces did he eat? How many tablespoons did he eat? Or if you're a mom and your baby is not making weight and they're just like, well, how many ounces? I mean, you're constantly being asked this. And yeah. so it's just a nice way to make it very visual and quick for them to be able to chart records. Yeah. And I just love it because it just makes me feel very comfortable. I know they're saving me. Very I've comfortable. Not, I've not had apple jacks in a while. I know. I like them. Um, it makes you feel very comfortable like, oh, I'm good. They had their protein already. Or I'm, And it just makes it feel like you've already accomplished something for the day. And so you already know that. So I like to give parents credit for what they're already doing. I, so don't, I don't eat cereal a lot. <laughs> and these are delicious. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep that right out. Oh, right I won't eat that yogurt, though. I don't like yogurt. Here we go again. Oh my gosh, Jamie, I didn't know that. How? Okay, so with the two eyes, let's just see if he'll do it. With the two eyes, can you just take those two eyes that are just dip, just slightly dipped into it and try to... I'm so proud of you. That's great. You can wash it down with wine. Um. Because you just got a couple nibbles of protein with that. I mean, that's what we're really trying to count, right? Is that, yeah. hey, can we dunk? Can we get kids to dunk foods and try think, to get a little bit of protein? I think and... I know that there are lots of yogurts out there. Mm -hmm. And I think my issue with yogurt is much like my issue is with uh, cheesecake. It tastes like rotten milk to me. It oh. does not taste good. Because I love uh, pudding. Like, give yes. me pudding, give yes. me whatever. Okay. But it is this. It it tastes spoiled yeah, to I me can, because of the sour it. bite behind right, it. Right, right, right. Um, and I know that I could try like yes. the Greek yogurts and mm -hmm, all this other mm -hmm, stuff and mm -hmm. there's different things out there, but my brain's like, I don't want anything to do mm -hmm, with it. I mm -hmm. don't want anything to do with that yogurt. Well, it can be there. It can be right there. Mm -hmm. in front of you. If you, you know, little dips. Here. So then I thought, I'm going to try a little bit more on this one. I love it. Let's try a quick, again, something very quick, simple, fun. No. Take a piece of, <laughs> take a piece of spinach and a four leaf clover 
or um, a cookie cutter that has some kind of um, cute little symbol for um, St. Patrick's Day. And you pop this out and you get a little, little shape. She can't see it because we're kind of far away, but you get a little shape. It's just a little shape. And that's and what so it, you can just add that onto the mat. When we were so talking yeah. about like what we were going to do tonight, yeah. you know, everybody knows like all the Easy Peasy's Facebook and their Instagram. Like you constantly see really cute fruit things like this in these plates. And I was like, this, that's a lot of effort to do. And you can see yogurt in some cereal, it's really not. Nice. Then it's quick. Mm -hmm. So. And it's just, and that just took one second to make a little cookie cutter. And then now it just looks a little fun. Like it mm -hmm. just looks like, well, if the kids don't want to eat spinach, if they don't want to eat their green veggies, this is just something that's very. And I like spinach. It's very simple to do. So I, like, I just thought this would be fun to just I like show. Spinach and I like arugula. Oh, I like arugula too. And that's got a little so taste. It's yes. Got pepper it's to got, it. yes. That's only only I think the like the last three or four years I've gotten into arugula. That's a that's an acquired taste. But I sure. love arugula. Put arugula on all the things. Oh. I'll have to make something with arugula. Ru give me like a pizza with arugula and prosciutto Ooh. and like shaved parmesan on it Ooh. and some olive oil. Like we get so hungry after these, <laughs> after these We talks. do. When you talk when you talk about food, you're like, oh, oh like that's not delicious. Oh, oh. yum. Yeah, I love it. Um, so what else? So I bought some other fun things. These are ninja chopsticks, which actually one of my friends invented. And um, he had a young man, uh, a young son that I worked with for years for feeding. And he decided, and his son loved ninjas, and mm -hmm. so he made these little chopsticks that have these little ninja faces. Yeah. And they fight, like you can you know, fight with them, but you can also use them as chopsticks to be able to pick up things. Well. A lot of the kids that I work with are into like superheroes, ninja, just action yeah. in general. And so I like I like ninja chopsticks to be able to kind of you know pick up foods and make things fun and you know they fly around and it's. Just... We'll we'll get links to the stuff. Yes. Uh, yes. Under this because we also I mean we'll talk about it later obviously, but she has this new utensil set that we'll show you. Yes. That's really nice. Yes. We'll mm. we'll put in links. Yeah. So this is something, again, just makes food fun. Don't give the spoon, don't give the fork, give them some chopsticks, have them try to figure it out. I mean, this is like, right? You could just yeah. stab it. I love the it. skewer. Like, yeah, I love the skewer so you can eat it. And kids do too, it makes it fun. And so, you know, this is a different way to eat cereal, right? Chopsticks, poke a hole through it, and you know, you can dip it into some yogurt, and it makes it a little fun. So, there's that. I also um, thought, again, in the, feel of St. Patrick's Day. If you, sometimes, I'll let you oh, wear yes. those. Absolutely. This, I feel Come like. Come to the table. I feel like Elton John. With a little goofiness. Um, it just makes things a little bit more fun. So you can really get into the theme of trying some green foods and making, ooh, fabulous, making food a little bit more interesting because you're willing to step out the side of the box and you, be a little you can, goofy. You can tell these are not made for someone with a head my size. <laughs> Because all I really see out of this is a giant green bar. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but I'll do it. I'll suffer for my art. Yes. There now, you what go. about these straws you brought with so, you? So yes. So I mean, I, I filled my glass for right. a reason. So, so we want to make food fun, and we want to make drinks fun. So if you guys are making juices or smoothies, or if you have a drink that you want your child to drink that they're just not willing to drink anything besides water, which I have a lot of kids on my caseload who won't drink anything, no milk, no sodas. Um, nothing and um, we want them to drink something so there's some straws out there that are just kind of you know fun a mustache you for another drink of this little mustaches and you could just drink with your little mustache and so you can place them at different places on the straw to make it more fun your mustache is upside down. Is it? You're a mess. No, I am mm -hmm. a hot mess. Oh. Mine, mine is giving you a sense of the... There, how about that? The straw's almost going at my nose. You have to like... Well, you gotta work with what you're given. <laughs> so that is a fun straw. It makes things, I mean, and all these novelty straws, you know, you can have different things. Oh, yeah. are Like lips or, I mean, it's just, again, something fun and exciting for kids to be able to You know who out. makes a ton of really fun stuff is Fred. Yeah. Yes. Fred makes yes. really right. fun stuff right. for like You're right. stuff. You're so, right. So random. 
Yeah, and you know those little Lego guys, which I forgot to bring, but I brought them last time. Mm -hmm. They stick on straws. Their little hands stick on straws. So I'll have a little a little straw with one of their little hands, like kind of holding on to something. Again, oh. if kids are into Star Wars or you know Bob the Builder or whatever it is, their little Legos that mm -hmm. they've done, and you could just stick them onto straws and, and make it a little bit more. Lego fun. has licensed everything. everything, so you can get a superhero. You can get anything you need. You can get Disney princesses. Yep. That'd be great, actually, a little yep. aerial stuck to your straw. And it's just, again, it's like if you're doing themes, right? If you're if you're trying, so it could be, the, you know, a Green Goblin because it's, you know, St. Patrick's yeah. Day. I mean, you could just keep going with themes to make it fun and exciting. You know, the next theme could be Easter or Spring or just, you know, it just you can just find different ways to be able to do that. Another straw that I like to use is cool change straws. And these are straws that actually change colors with the beverage that Ooh. you're in. So that just makes kids, you know, want to try something. So if I'm wanting them to get a drink juice and I say, this straw is going to change colors after you take a drink. They're like, wait, what? And then they'll be willing to take one little sip, right? And then I'm like, ooh, I wonder what color it would take next, change next. And then it just kind of keeps them interesting. Yeah. Now you've got five sips of a green juice that you didn't have before because it's something fun. So that can be another really fun way to kind of encourage drinking. Another um, straw that I love is green packs. And what it is, what is, is it, it is a straw that connects and um, that, that I personally drink all my smoothies out of. And it's, it's huge. And it's huge. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like a boba straw. And, and so try that one. Um, so this is what that one looks like. Oh, these are great. Yeah, they're amazing. And they're easy to clean. I take them with me personally when I'm traveling um, just because of the fact that I try not to use a lot of different there's, plastic there's, straws. Um, there's a company, do you know, um, Oh God, they're called Be Strawsum. Strawsum, they make I glass do. ones. Yes, I have, I have glass one, I have too. one. I have one here. Oh, I love and that they're one. they're awesome. I love that one. They, they, this is really good. Yes, I'll need to take a, a picture of this because yes. I want to order some of these. Oh yeah, they're so fun. I think you can get them at Bed Bath & Beyond. But actually, she's a friend of mine, so she likes them. Go to her thing, website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the website, we can put the links on, but greenpacks, P-A-X-X dot com. And oh, so, these right, are so good. I drink all my juices out of this. Mm-hmm. It just makes it, and then it's not, It's it just feels good, right? And it's easy to clean because they take yeah. apart. So you take them apart and it's just like, you just run water through them. You know what, this, like this so also nice. might be good for people that are worried about like drinking coffee if they don't want to mess their teeth yes, up or yes, something. Right. Exactly. You can like drink your coffee. And it really works on good lip rounding, which is great. Look at that. I'm like, ooh. Mm. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Which, let's just go into that. So I think, oh, oh wait, let, me, let me do a couple more drinking things. Drinking things. Drinking things. It also yeah. having to do with St. Patrick's Day. Right. Drinking. So you guys have probably seen all these before, right? So you, whoops, there we go. So they go in and you, it goes into one drink if we get to it at the same time, and then goes into your mouth and you can suck it up. And what I love to do with kids is that I'll put this into the drink, the sides into the drink, and they'll actually work on their suction. And so you'll see the liquid go up to. because you have yeah. to, and it's a nice visual. We'll even do it in front of the mirror. So it's a nice visual of the kids going, come on, keep going, keep going, keep drinking, keep sucking, keep going, oh, you got it, yay! And then it's just another fun way, again, to get those nutrients into kids to be able to make it fun, right? Dawn, this is fun. Dawn, she's smart. Thanks. She's smart. And again, they're easy to clean. They just pop off, and you can just clean them really easily. So um, and you can get these at like all kinds Party of City parties. Party City or something, exactly. probably. And it just makes um, it, it just makes it fun. And, and... And again, we're trying to get kids to try some a new taste. Mm -hmm. Something. This is a good way to instead of just putting it on the plate, saying "eat it, take a bite." Actually, let's do something that kind of encourages them to want to do um, something. There's we never get to go through all of your props because no, we get busy. Yeah. But let's do a. I let's talk about the egg mold. Oh, okay. Listen, I hate eggs. I hate them. We've talked about this yeah. before. I hate any kind of egg. I don't like a fried egg. I don't like a scrambled egg. I don't like a hard boiled egg. To me. Hard-boiled eggs, they smell, they smell like the devil. I don't like, they gross me out so much. Okay, but so I know, pe I but I know people are into this. Yep. I know you can buy hard-boiled eggs at the grocery store or Starbucks now as a snack. Yes, you can. Which to me is repugnant. I don't want to go into Starbucks and buy an egg. It grosses me out. And I'm like, right. woo, I'll be in line and get that protein Because it's healthy. Like it. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, give me a bag of Sour Patch Kids. Oh, I love it. Um, food is food. Food is food. 
So egg molds. Well, we're coming into Easter season, and so eggs are something that usually a couple weeks before Easter, the clients that are on my caseload are like, Dawn, we have to get my kids to eat eggs. Because every year, you know, we go over to my mother-in-law's and they have deviled eggs, and my mm -hmm. kids don't eat them, and they just start stressing out over the social implications of not eating eggs. Um, unless, of course, they're allergic. But So this is just a fun way to be able to take an egg and you put it in here, After hard boiled, it, uh -huh, okay. and then you just clip it and it molds. And so as it starts to get colder, it just molds into this mold and it becomes this little cute little, it's a fish. Cute little fish. I actually, so horror movies are my favorite and this is like Mine whatever. Uh -huh. uh, but one of the websites that I like go on, oh no it was Buzzfeed actually that I saw this. It was Buzzfeed and they made like a horror movie skull egg mold. So oh, you could fun. eat like the skull. You know. I need that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which we need to talk about in a horror movie that I just saw recently. Which one? I, did you see Switch? I haven't yet. No, 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 it's no. no. So good. It's okay, so good. fair enough. It's so good. I like that. Um, okay, we'll talk so about So we have Fun Bites over here yes. too. Yes, oh my gosh. So Fun Bites, another fun cookie cutter, again, green theme, um, where you basically push through and kind of rock um, fruits and vegetables or breads or different things. Mm -hmm. Again, to make these little tiny, you see my theme is always like tiny, right? Little tiny um, bites, literally. So if you're doing baby lead weaning, you've got yeah. it down. Um, so how do you, actually you put up, uh, I saw somewhere this the past few days there was a graphic that you shared or something about like size and yes. what you need. And yes. It needs to be about the size of your fingernail. Yes, about your pinky fingernail. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically, you know, that, I feel like I'm flipping you off. That little, that size. So you're trying to cut those bites, and if you look, it's like, you know, really yeah. close. So, so you know what is good for cutting up bites. <gasps> yes, another favorite. Mixed and pears. And it's green, and it's green. I love these, I use Me these. Too. I am a grown ass man, <laughs> and I use my mixed pears yes. for myself. It's great for like pastas uh, or yes. anything. Like meats. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about this. And veggies, you can, you can cut straight up and down into the bowl. Yes. Like do whatever. Love it. These are awesome. My favorite scissors by far. And again, same thing. They're mm -hmm. in my utensil drawer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a set for the kids that I work with, and then I have a yeah. set for me personally so that I can do that same thing. But cutting up baked potatoes when they're hot, uh -huh. like it just like opens it up, put the butter in. I mean, or like when you like oh. cook chicken and you want to like yes, cut it up cut for it a up. salad or something. Yes. Like, <laughs> done. Hot iron steak we were just talking about. Oh my oh God, my I'm gosh. craving a steak so yes. bad. Um, yes, and actually oh. I made a Cobb salad which is on my Instagram feed and I people are like, how'd you make it? And it's just basically you just, you know, cook the my, bacon and then just cut it up with my scissors and it's just. My neighbor just texted me to see if I have Beauty and the Beast or Little Mermaid and if they can borrow them. And of course I have them. The answer is of course. So we'll deal with that when we are done with this. It's awesome. Um, um, should, what else? What else? Did, should we go through some questions? Should we keep going? Well, let's okay. actually, let's go through some props. We let's never get to go through okay. props. Okay, so I'm going to do And then we'll more. go to questions. Okay. So we have like seven more minutes for props, okay. and then we'll do a half hour I'll go for fast. questions. I'll go fast. So okay. one of the other things that I I'll get her hat. love, again, with every kid is different, right? Every child loves things, doesn't like things, you know, finds, one kid will find something totally gross like eggs, and another kid will just think this is like amazing, right? So again, I'm showing you all kinds of stuff. I love making sandwiches and doing things Fred. and it's Fred in oh. Ziploc bags and like making it kind of funny. So these are lunch bugs bags and what's hilarious about it, again, warning if you're afraid of bugs, I'm going to show a bug thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a Ziploc bag with a picture of a cockroach on the back. So it looks like when you put a sandwich in here, it looks like there's a cockroach on the back. Which is genius. Which is so And fun. like, you know. Oh my gosh. Truth be told, I'm not like a giant Ziploc bag fan. I have some, but right, right, I love right. my wing green. Yes. I love my glass yes. stuff. Me too. But this is just like so an fun. occasional like joke kind of thing, and I think it's really funny. And kids love it because mm -hmm. it's just like, especially if you're like, hey, this week I'm gonna put a cockroach in your in your lunch bag. Again, if you have a kid with a severe feeding challenges, this wouldn't be funny at all. But for those kids who just kind of need encouragement to kind of eat their lunch at school, it can be really funny. Yeah. And I've actually done this with a couple kids, and they're like, Miss Dawn, I can't believe you did that. 
yeah. And it was like a funny thing. I'm like, did you eat your whole sandwich? And they're like, yeah. And not only that, it ends up becoming a production at the table. Yeah. Like all the kids are like, who made that for you? What was that? What are you I just eating? Got, I just got so hungry because I see Ziploc bags like this and I automatically think of like a oh. good little sandwich oh. packed in your lunch, you know? I'll leave you a cockroach. Like, you just, <laughs> you, like I, it's something like, you, yes. that is what yes. you put in those. It's right. like a little like lunch meat yes. sandwich. And that sounds so good right now with like some ruffles. I love it. Ruffles oh, has ridges. ridges. <laughs> Here's another one. Um, and so these are, you know, I love mustaches and little goofy things. So this is another one that has like a mustache and a little eyepiece. A little monocle. It's so cute. Here's a story about a monocle that has nothing to do with this. So okay. many years ago, I did a production <laughs> of The Sound of Music. Ooh. And I was probably 23 at the time. Um... I, all I wanted in my life was to be Rolf in The Sound of Music. I was like, oh, I am no. as blonde blue as you come. I will give you 16 going on 17 with the best of them. So the first time I did Sound of Music, I was not cast as Rolf. I was Harry Zeller, the Gowletter, who like is the awful Nazi guy. So to age me, I wore this mustache they like taped to my face, you know, and whatever. <laughs> and then I had a monocle. Oh. And I, monocles are hysterical, yeah. whatever. But the monocle did not fit my orbital socket properly. Oh, no. So they had to glue it to my skin with that tape, with like the top stick. So I got this horrible rash oh, no. all around my eyeball like, from wearing that monocle at night. Monocle to Spuds McKenzie all in one day. Don't don't wear a mono don't glue a monocle to your face is my advice for you. No, no, don't it's do that. It's not pleasant. Kids at home, don't try that. Mm -mm. Oh wait, did I have this? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, and we have these. Oh, yeah, we, we have so, so many. Okay, I'm so going to try to... Brrr, and the alligator hat. Yes. Yeah. She brought the alligator hat. I did. As soon as he posted that, uh, I had to like, like, bring it and just be like... It reminds kids to chew. Again, it's fun. It's green. It's fun. It helps kids to chew. It just keeps them as a, a tactile reminder, right? You can feel mm -hmm. this. It's a tactile reminder. Oh, I didn't even think, think about chew. that. I, I thought of like chew. an alligator has the jump, yes, jump. Yes, yes, but you actually do yes. feel this in your life. It gives you, and it just kind of reminds you, hey, keep chewing, keep chewing, keep chewing. Work That's on that skill. really smart. So work on that skill. Keep that going. And it's just a fun kind of... I mean, you could do that with like a party hat Absolutely. or anything, anything that kind of... Any, again, theme, right? And so, I just got a text message from Tara from Stroller Traffic asking if I ever watched Felicity. <laughs> team Ben. Always Team Ben. Oh, um, I don't know how you can read that. This is great, great, actually. Yes, so it's just anything, again, a theme. So if you're having Dinosaur Week or like Shark Week, you know, find these. At, this is at the 99 cent store. No. And so if, you're, if your child's party is coming up, like, you know, a party hat, right? It, anything... Anything that you can kind of just have this theme going on. So we just kind of have a little bit of green theme going on. I will leave this on for the duration of this Q&A. Awesome. As my sacrifice to you. <laughs> I love it. So these are little beakers. And basically they, again, give ounces. This is a one ounce line. And they come in a set of three. I should have brought all of them, but I just brought them. They're from Oxotot. Yep. And I like them because of the fact that I can pour in a little bit of a smoothie or a juice, put it up to a certain line, and kind of say to kids, you know, hey, would you drink to that little line? I need to go something. get a prop. Keep talking. Yes. I just had an idea. And kids are willing to do it because it looks like a little beaker and they try to drink out of this little side. And again, it just changes things up to make mealtime a little bit different. And again, if we're taking the time to make a green juice or make a smoothie or try to get kids to get those extra nutrients in, you know, it's kind of fun to be able to see success. Another reason why I like this is that it's see-through. And so that they can see the line and they, if we fill it up to one line and they take a sip, they can see that line go down. I'm like, oh my gosh, you only need one more sip and you've like finished one line and we'll toss it and do goofy things. Can you also do it with a Celine Dion shot glass? <laughs> you can! You can and be like, <laughs> I drove all night to get you juice. Yes! And you're like, yes. it's all coming back to me now that you're not eating enough. Right! And a Celine Dion shot glass. Yes! But here's actually something completely random, and I'm just springing this on you because okay. I want to get, I okay. think it's, I view it as like a party trick, joke, whatever. Okay. But you know Polaroid? Yes. So they make these little cameras now like this. Ooh. So you can like, they're magnetic, you can stick them wherever. 
But fun fact, for those of you that like to throw parties for the neighbors, they have this adapter that's a shot glass. So you can actually stick the camera up this way. What? So if you're like, I did it once to see like what it looked going down while I was drinking. What? So you can film and it's like drink an ounce or two or whatever and you get to see what it looks like going down. That's interesting, right? That's one of the I best just got, eating tips. I just got ever. brain I just had a brainstorm out of nowhere. Like wow. that's cool, right? Okay, yeah. I have one. I'll I give you one. Am obsessed I have with an extra idea. one in my office. I'll give you one to play with. Oh my gosh, Jamie, I love this. Right? It's interesting. Especially, hey, it'll be a fun way to look at you know into a no. child's oral cavity because I'm like I can have a really hard time sometimes. Yeah. Kids sometimes don't want to be looking around. Yeah. So it's fun, right? That's so I don't know cute. why I never thought about that. Oh my gosh, best feeding tip. Hashtag Jamie's best feeding Polaroid. tip ever. So I'll get I'll wow. give a new one to you. I um but it's great, it hooks into your phone, it's all Bluetooth, and you can like record anything and then be like, tequila! Or Wow! You know Green juice. Protein shapes. Wow. And that would be cool. Now that would be a great reinforcer for a kid to be like, I'm gonna drink this for the first time and like see a picture of me drinking Make it. it. Fun. Wow. Hey therapist, you heard it here first. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Amazing. I'm so good Ooh, today. I'm so good. You are. You know um, why? It's because you have your thinking cap on. I have my thinking cap and on. And when you have your thinking cap on, things come mm -hmm. very quickly. I also thought this would be a very interesting little tool for like IBCLCs. So mm. I'm going to get a set of these for Cherry Creso mm. um, because the the ounce markings are very good. Yes. And it's so nice to be like, this is actually what a baby should be doing. Yes. Because you can see it better than in like yes. a bottle. Um, I agree. So, what else do you have over there? Okay, so a couple of we'll do more like, things. Uh, we'll just do a couple more minutes okay, a few and then more. we'll go okay. to questions. So, under the drinking theme again, the original squeeze. I love them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could put your green juice in here or a smoothie or yogurt with some chia seeds and just kind of make it fun and, and easy to drink for an on-the-go solution, which is what I really love how they promote that. Is I'm not the biggest fan of you know pouches and things that go into the mouth where kids can kind of like hold on to their teeth and, and like, oh, this is this is also much safer for use in a car so much because safer. it yes. is soft and it yes whistles um because in a back seat a lot of people will use these giant sippy cups that are stainless steel or whatever if you're in a wreck god forbid or like you slam on the brake that stainless steel thing is gonna hurt your child's head. It's a projectile. Yep. So this is super soft. I'll take my hat off for a minute. Yes. So side note, how we test what we put in our car seats with our kids, we do what's called like the self ouch test or some variation thereof. You take what you'd put with your kid in the car seat and you hit yourself in the head with it. Mm. And if you don't like the way it feels, you don't put it in the back seat with your kid in the car seat. So the fact that this wow. is silicone, it's super soft. You know, whatever. Go ahead and hit yourself. Try. Like, yep. that's not a problem. Okay. So, for a food option or something yes. in the back seat yes. with your kids, this is a great, great, great little thing. Love them. Back to my alligator. Back to your alligator. Um, a couple more things. I, if you guys make juices or smoothies and you fill up a popsicle tray. What I like is the ones that have the popsicle stick but also have the straw connector. Yes, because you can take, if you, you know, for me, I don't really like cold on my two front teeth, so when I'm eating a popsicle um, and my teeth get cold, I like to have the option of using my lip browning and sucking some of those juices out. And so it just ends up being a nice, fun way, again, to drink some liquids for- I remember when I was a kid and those first came out and oh. it was like the biggest deal on the planet. Yeah. You would like freeze up some grape juice or something yes. in there and just like, <laughs> and yes. drink. And then go outside to your slip and slide uh -huh. and like slip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was fine. Pretty great. Yes. Um, um, what else? What else? I have to showcase this new product that I'm falling for. You're seeing it here oh, basically first. It's so cute. Let me get their packaging. So, Grabbies. Um, super cute. We've got a fork. Let me get a little closer. And a spoon. And they have a lip lock. So basically it goes, I'm gonna do it sideways. So it can goes into the child's mouth, but this block blocks them. Keeps it from going all the way back. They can't mm -hmm, choke. Mm -hmm. And so they're just learning how to eat mm -hmm. for the first time, learning how to, I'm just gonna stick this in here, to feed. And easily do that. It's got a great grabber. Yeah. 
And what, what's interesting about the grabber is it's not a big handle. So when you have little bitty baby hands and whatnot that mm -hmm. can't do that, they can grab it like this mm -hmm. and feed. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a great little... Yes. Easy Peas is going to be doing a giveaway with them. And yeah. so you'll be we'll, able we'll to put the, win We'll put the this. link to these because um, mm -hmm. I just saw these for the first time tonight. You use them in the photo with yep. Veda in the alligator that. hat. And I was like, it, it looks like a weird like... Passy dose, like you know, like medicine pacifier yes, kind of thing. Yes, yes. But it's not at all. It's yes. a great little utensil. Super cute. Mm -hmm. And then they also stand. So then that when you're when you know you're trying for those of you who you know are a little cootie phobic, mm -hmm. your kid's utensil is not touching. Yeah. So it's nice, and I think it's very. It looks very posh. Look on the mat. Oh, that that is so Instagram worthy. worthy. That is so good for the IG. I love that. So mm -hmm. we've got that, and then um, so many. So last yeah, time you we didn't talked, do that. Yeah. last time we talked about ice cube trays and using those, and I wanted to show my little ice cube tray that tray that pops out a little pieces of puree that are perfect size for the little Lego miniatures that I had, and so I finally found mine, and look how tiny that is. And so you can pop those out. So if you're making your own baby food, I like these little pop-outs and it just ends up popping out and being this really tiny square piece of food. Again, perfect for baby mm -hmm. like weaning, perfect if you want a child to just try one little bite, um, perfect for a food art if you're going to pop these out and make little eyes and that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just, it just, I mean, and it also looks like tea, so you can put little teeth. I mean, it just can be something fun and easy. And I forgot to show You know that. what could also be interesting with this? Because you know um, a lot of the parents are really into those, like, I don't like the mesh ones, but like the silicone mm -hmm. ones where yeah. you can like gum on them. Yes. Mm -hmm. But a lot of women during my chat with share, like they have all this extra breast milk, whatever, and what mm -hmm. to do with it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of parents freeze their breast milk. Yes. And if you put perfect. it in one of those, yes, perfect. You can like go ham on it. Absolutely. So absolutely come on. Look at Look that. at me! Keep the, that on all night. I'm, <laughs> I'm nailing. I don't, is this Monday? My is days it, bleed together. It's it Monday? Monday. I think it yeah, is. Yeah, it is Monday. Oh my gosh, it's been a long day for me. Too. Yeah. Woo. Um. So what else? Should we just so go to questions now? Soon? We we should. Well. We'll, we'll wait a we minute. We have a laugh. Let, let me just do at least do these. In and four then. in four minutes, we will go to questions. Okay. This is what happens. Four, this is I know. What I just I bring too much chatting. stuff. I bring too much. Stuff. Well, you should see. I mean, for those of you who actually have watched all of them, you can imagine like how much stuff I own. Mm -hmm. And um, just she, because they try to just, you know, again, just keep it fresh. It's a bag of tricks. It is yeah. a bag of tricks. And like, she went in my office for the first time tonight. Yeah. And it's a disaster. <laughs> uh, and it's just car seats and crap everywhere. Yeah, it's so. really fun though. Mm -hmm. I really, I want some of that stuff. So, okay. okay. So really quickly, um, in the feeding world, we are always looking at how people eat from a functional standpoint. What do your lips do on that straw? What does your lips do on the spoon, on a chopstick? We are constantly looking at the functional mobility of our oral structures. Mm -hmm. And I am constantly teaching parents to look at that too. So I'm, I'll tell parents like, does your child eat on the right side or the left side? We've actually had comments where they've said, oh, yeah, 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 I actually watched and you know, he we, does eat on We worked on this last exactly. time. Exactly. Or, you know, does your child, is your child able to stick their tongue up and wipe off the food off their lips? And they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know. And then parents will text me and say, you're right, Don, no, he can't. And I'm like, oh, that's another way to look for a tongue tie, right? So I just wanted to show you some of the cards that we use. This is a game called Mighty Mouth, and it's a big board game. It kind of looks like Sorry, okay. and um, it's just fun, and we use them. And But I thought it would be fun to show you some of these exercises. In the speech pathology world, they say, you know, Oral motor exercises, m moving of those oral structures doesn't really improve speech, but in feeding, it really does. Yeah. So if I have a kid that if I say, show me your teeth, and you show me your teeth, and I see a nice big smile, show the camera, nice big smile, right? You can see that there's not one side that's weaker than the other. I can see both sides of his teeth. He's able to kind of retract his lips a little bit so I can see his upper gums, perfect. I'll do this with kids and be like, whoa, let me see your teeth. And there'll be one side that's that's not quite um, um, unilateral. Uh, I'll see a tremor, like it almost took like too much effort. effort. Um, I'll see a movement of the lip being really high, so I think there might be a lip tie. I get a lot of information from this fun little Simon Says game, basically. Huh. So tongue down, 
Let chin me see touch. Your, mm -hmm. Yes, good. So now I can see like how long he could do that, how much of his tip can go down, how far can he reach, um, and what his tongue this is doing. This is really awkward. Yeah. What his tongue is doing. Is there a nice line between that? Is it not? Like, is his lips folding in the back? Is it stained red because I is had a glass of wine? Yes, the so answer is. So you get a lot of info from it. And if I put some yogurt, which I won't do to him, but if I put some yogurt down here at the bottom, could you, like, take your tongue and be able to touch it? Cheek puff. Puff out your cheeks, right? And then can I push on them? Do you have enough strength to be able for me to push on that? There you go. Um, and this is really important too, because guess what? Every single time you swallow, you hold your breath. And kids mm -hmm. have difficulties doing that. So everyone at home, take your saliva, pull it up in your mouth, and swallow. You held your breath. And so if I have kids that aren't able to do this very well, that gives me a lot of information when parents are like, I don't know why, they just don't eat soup. And I'm like, well, they can't really hold their breath very well, and soup has liquids, plus some veggies, yeah. plus some meat. That's a lot of information. Thanks for the, the heart and the like there. We need, um, we need hearts and likes. We yes, that's how we go. I'm on the right track. Because I'm wearing an alligator hat <laughs> and sticking my tongue out. And so it gives me a lot of information about this child's respiratory status, because kids are always going to pick breathing over eating. Yeah, and like there, there are even times like when I'm a little congested or something, I'm like, it's a little bit of a struggle for me to eat right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. <laughs> because I can't breathe through my nose. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know. Yes. Yes. The struggle is real. The struggle is real. 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 What is this one? Fish lips. So again, if I'm putting a straw in there, we're going to try to get some movement oh. of those lips, right? So, I gotta laugh. And if I, if I, if I did it, eat off the fork or the spoon. I don't care. Okay, eat off so, the fork, but. Oh, I don't have a, I'll use a. I want to use the yogurt so bad. Go I'm for it. Out, I'll but I'm not going to do it. But see? Mm. Mm. It's hard to get that shirt off. Mm. You could do it. There you go. He had the perfect <laughs> lip movement and didn't want to let go of it. It's awesome. So I can get a lot of information from that. Tongue side to side. So, huh. uh -huh. so if I take this same, and I am going to do a little bit of yogurt now. If I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of put it over here on this mm -hmm. side and put it over here on this side, can you? Lick that off. Can you get that? There you go. Yeah. What? Oh, it's horrible. I don't like the yogurt. <laughs> I look disastrous. It's awesome. There you go. So that gives me a lot of information, right? Because guess what? We need to have tongue lateralization in order mm -hmm. to be able to chew. So if you have your alligator hat on, but you can't get your tongue back here onto your teeth to be able to chew, it's going gonna, it's gonna to let me know that chewing is going to be very difficult. So guess what are the two foods that you need to be able to chew? meat and vegetables and if your kid's not eating meat or vegetables it might be that they aren't able to move their tongue from side to side outside the mouth as well as inside the mouth right so you could take this you could take this and put this on your tongue uh -huh. and put it onto your back teeth and then uh -huh. bite so if your child's not able to do that then we know that that's going to be difficult for them to eat meat and vegetables, mm. which is something that a couple questions were, you know, hey, how can I get my child to eat yeah. meat and vegetables? Lipstick press. This is basically thinking like I just put some chapsticks on you, and can you move your lips like this? Now, this is very important because if you have a whole bunch of puree on a spoon and you need to press those lips together, right, to get that last bit off, or keep your lips tight, um, to have good lip closure on the ed of, edge of a drink or a glass, right? I am you need a 38-year-old man and an alligator hat. <laughs> For a long time. Mm. Tongue push. Can you push your tongue into your cheek and then me try to... There you go. On this side. There you go. Nice. And you know that your nieces and nephews do some of these with me. And they will have to just show them this little bit that you did it. Oh, they yeah. are gonna love that, by the way. They love this. Okay, and so this, this is a game. It's a game. It's a game. Wait, it's and called it, Mighty Mouth. Called Mighty Mouth. It's okay. a speech therapy game. It's called Mighty Mouth. And I just use a card to be able to kind of again use this in feeding, right? I can use that in speech and feeding. Tongue up and down. Can you get your tongue up and down? Now, can you do that again with a piece of cereal? Can you get that that piece of cereal up? Put it up to the roof of your mouth. Uh -huh. Great. Nice. Perfect. Do you want it on my hard palate or soft palate? Ooh, what do you need? I think I want it on your hard palate. Yes. And then you can crush it up against there. Nice. So those I took are just a lot some... of voice and diction classes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, those are just a few things that I just thought we could rush through and just give you guys some ideas on some themes and different techniques. 
with having a little bit of a green theme in there and we just nailed that making that was 45 minutes of prop work Whew. all right okay questions so i'm sure we have some questions um let me load up the old book of face here um here we oh, good. We're getting smart. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Hearts. Appreciate that. And so make much. sure you go follow her page. It's mm. linked. Go follow her. Follow her on the Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, it's very good. Um, oh, here's something good. Okay. What are some good transition into chewing foods? My one-year-old mm -hmm. wants to mush and suck on everything. Mm -hmm. He will chew once or twice, but then goes back to mushing whatever. He will hold things in his mouth until they soften and he can just swallow them. Mm -hmm. Things like chicken, he just sucks on and takes out of his mouth until it's where he can swallow it. Uh, he does get choked on some stuff. Okay. So just like... Yes, I will... I'm always like... I, I feel like I bring so much stuff and then I feel like I don't have enough. Enough. So I'm going to use this piece of cereal, but what I would think of having like a veggie chip. Mm -hmm. And so... We've talked about this before, and I don't know if it was last one or one before, but basically working on some chewing is you can put this on his back teeth and have him do multiple um, chews. So I'm gonna get a little closer, even though it's not as flattering, but we're gonna do this and it's like. I'm wearing an alligator hat, flattering doesn't matter. See how many chews that takes? So we're basically moving that jaw. Where I mean, the jaw is a primary articulator for speech as well as for feeding. So we have to exercise this jaw to be able to withstand the yeah. amount of pressure, especially that it Remind takes... Remind me, I found a teether I need to show you. I want oh, your thoughts. Oh. We won't do it right here. Okay, ooh, But ooh. I, ooh. okay. Okay, I get excited about that. Mm -hmm. New products excite me. Um, so we want to work that jaw to be able to have the stamina to be able to eat a piece of meat. Because again, what do we need when we're trying to eat that piece of chicken? We need the jaw stability to be able to chew that food. We need that tongue moving to get that food onto the back teeth if you're fatigued or you don't have enough um, motor strength to be able to do that, you're just going to spit that right out. Now, again, they're getting some nourishment as they're chewing some of that and they're getting um, with their saliva and being able to pull some of that nourishment. But if they're spitting everything out, then that lets me know like they don't have the skill set to be able to do that. So you can either use um, the scissors and cut up those pieces of chicken a little bit smaller. Um, the worry, though, is that when, when they'll chew it for a few bites and then spit it out, it's almost, it's, it's that, that skill, what parents will do is they'll cut it up and then, but the kid will swallow it. Ah. So it's like being able, you can do that for some, like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or whatever, but for snack time, I want to teach that chewing skill. So if they swallow, if you cut it up and they swallow that whole, that's okay, but then we want to teach them that chewing skill during snack time and be like, because two reasons for that, let me explain that. One is I don't like kids to go to bed hungry. I don't like kids to be hungry between meals. So I use snack time between breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner as a way to give them some food, but also give them food that a skill set that they're going to be working on that I want them to be able to progress to. Okay. So if your child is, you know, not able to chew meat, we want to be able to work on some chewing skills during snack time. If we work on those chewing skills during a main meal like dinner and they get fatigued, they're like, I'd rather go to bed. I'd rather go to bed hungry. Yeah. Because, and then we lose, you know, weight gain, protein function, and their ability to, you know, make food fun. So during the snack times is where I'll actually work on those skills that I'm not, if they get tired, it's not like I'm losing a whole entire meal. So they're still going to be nourished, you know, two hours later when they have their meal, but we're kind of focusing on those skills during snack time. So um, you can work on that from both sides. And so if you're working on chewing just on one side, maybe their dominant side, you want to still go over to the other side and practice that too. Here's some of the things that you can do that are kind of fun, again, making all these things fun, is that you can put the food in front of them, have them chew with their front teeth, put it on the side, and have them not turn their head. Because what they're going to do is they're going to go... Go to the front. Exactly. You're like, you're going to keep this still, and I'm going to put this right here, and you're going to stay still. And it just kind of, again, makes it a little bit more fun. Or you can put on your An alligator, hat. alligator hat and work on some of these things. Yeah, this does make you like, I mean, yes. super aware of your yes. jaw. And sometimes we just need that. We just need that input, right? That tactile input to remind us to continue to work on that skill. I hope that answered your question. My uh, pediatrician mm -hmm. said we need to start solids with our four-month-old. 
Uh, wow. We tried cereal mixed with breast milk and pears, both of which she has zero interest in. She would not open her mouth for the spoon, and if any got in her mouth, she spit it right out. Mm -hmm. Should we keep trying to keep trying or wait a while? How would we know when she's ready? Oh, great question. So four months, unless unless there is, you know, some reason why we need to feed a four month old, like a heart surgery, or they need to gain weight, or they're very premature. I mean. I don't like to feed solids at four months. I like to wait till six because they have all the skills needed to be able to eat solid foods. The main thing is that you, that's a great question because you are saying, I'm not sure. My mommy gut is saying, yeah. mm, I'm not sure. And when your mommy gut is going off, you're usually right. And you're right on this. She's not ready. And so we want, we want to give foods to kids when they're ready for that developmental milestone. And so it's important for us to be ready with that next set of skills. But at six months, they're ready for some purees. And I personally, and we talked about this last time, yep. I'm not a fan of rice cereal. Um, there's a White Out Now program by Dr. Green that started that out that, you know, to make whole foods their first foods, not rice cereal. Um, and so I like to start off with, the, the pears is great, um, and start off with those solid foods to be able to let them be able to be show interest when they're ready, when they have the motor skills and the sensory skills in order to do that. Now, can four, some four month olds you know, eat fine? Yes, absolutely. I'm not shaming anyone for, for starting at four months, but I prefer to start at six. It's a developmental milestone that kids need to start to be able to be introduced to solid foods between six and nine months. And so um, there's a great book out there called Baby Self Feeding by Melanie Potok. And she talks about that too, that that stage between six and nine months is really important. We don't wanna wait till nine months because there's a lot of research that says if you wait past nine months, kids become picky and they it's, don't want to and it's, it's really like hard to eat. It's just like with introduction of a bottle. Right, if, exactly. If you wait too long to introduce right. a bottle, you miss the window and right. then you're screwed. Absolutely. Or so. taking a pacifier away at a certain time because then you miss the window of being able to take it out. Like there's, a, it's, it's all, these products are amazing. Food is amazing. All these things are incredible, but they're the right time for that for your child. Now again, I've had seven months old that still weren't ready. They were just a little bit behind their skill set and they just weren't ready. So then we started them at eight. You just have to look at your child. But if you have a four month old and they've got some good posture and they're reaching for food and they're interested, that's, they're yeah. letting us know that they're ready. They have those skill sets. Um, but to answer your question, I I would prefer to wait till no. to but six like months. a four month old who's like not even sitting who's up. Not, who's not sitting up it's and like, not interested, they're not ready. Yeah. Um, another Ooh. question, we need more Apple Jacks on that uh, oh, easy peasy thing. Thank you. Um, Into our sage mat. Oh, there's so there are so many questions. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh, man. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready. Some of these I I know we'll cover um, next month. Um, well, as you're looking my, at that, my son has Down syndrome. Okay. We have been home from China almost six months. He okay. doesn't know how to chew at all. He is on full puree. Uh, how can okay. I teach him to chew? And I'm gonna see if I can find out like. I don't have information on how old he is. Okay. Um, but so uh, I teach a course on feeding children with Down syndrome, and uh, that will be in May in California. And uh, one of the things that I like to do is sometimes kids with Down syndrome uh, like to stay on purees because of the fact that they have smaller nasal passages more ear infections, more congestion going on in their face. Lots of people say, oh, it's because they have large tongues. That's not true. It's just like anything that doesn't have a lot of tone makes it a little bit thicker. So we want to get that tongue to have a little bit more tone. The way that we can get more tone is to have challenging foods. So the more tone that we're able to get into the tongue, the more manageable they're able to work on food. So remember how we just talked about that snack time? During snack time, I'm trying to get kids with Down syndrome to increase the tone in their facial structures so that they can be more active participants in the feeding process and not be stuck on purees. Because that's easy, right? If you can't breathe, you're going to pick easy foods. And it's just a natural response for him to say, again, I want to breathe over eating. And so I'm going to breathe and eat the easiest food possible in order to keep my body 
under, um, have you ever been out of breath? Like in every single time I traveled, I don't know if this happens to you. <laughs> when I, I come, come back, back here, yeah. I can't, I can't breathe. I walk to the airport and I'm like, yes. Okay, good. It's not just me. Nope. Okay. So for me, I'm just like, ugh, right? And it's like, hey, let's have that steak. Like I'm not ready because I'm in respiratory distress. I need to have something that melts in my mouth. Usually carbohydrates, right? Yeah. So I'll want to eat some carbohydrates, things that'll just melt in my mouth, be very easy to chew and swallow because I'm struggling to breathe. So, and so he's doing the same thing. He's struggling to kind of manage this. And plus all of this, it's a you know, new situation, you know, coming from a different country. Um, it's, it's a lot to take in from a sensory perspective, which we'll talk more about sensory next month. Um, so what you want to do is just give him his purees. Um, Marcia Van Klein is a, my absolute hero. She's a feeding therapist and occupational therapist based out of Arizona. And she has this method called um, the clock method. And basically you go around and um, I wish I had our bowl, but uh, I'll just use this as an example. And so think of this as a bigger bowl though. Um, at 12 o'clock you have your, your child's regular puree. At three o'clock, you have puree with an itty bitty little bit of crumbs of something. So if I took this Apple Jacks uh -huh. and I crushed it into itty bitty minute pieces, we'd have that on top of the puree. At six o'clock, we have a little bit bigger pieces. Okay. At nine o'clock, we have a little bit bigger pieces. So we give a scoop of 12 o'clock. He loves it. You give a scoop of three o'clock. He's like, eh, I'm not sure, but it's microscopic little crumbs. I can do this. You give a bite at six o'clock and he's like, nope, spits it out. Well, then you go back to three. So you've gone from 12 very smooth purees to these little bit of crumbs and you're going from crumbs and purees now to like larger crumbs. And so then you can actually start adding food. So you can now have, you know, yogurt with some chia seeds. You can have yogurt with some hemp seeds. You can start adding tons of protein into this mix and having a little bit more texture. Um, and so her technique is the clock method and it's Very fascinating and she does all kinds of stuff with crumbs and I, it's wonderful. That's also interesting, you know, you talk about like protein and the chia seeds and mm -hmm. whatnot and mm -hmm. I think, I know I'm not that educated in stuff because like you always assume you're like, oh, I gotta get my calcium out of milk. No, oh, you right. can get your calcium out of so much so other stuff other mm -hmm. and it's the same with protein. Mm -hmm. There's, there are other ways if you're not a meat person yes. or you are not a dairy like to yes. get nutrients that you need yes um, again I feel like I'm constantly going back to this book but this is the thing is the reason why I wanted certain content in this book is because it's the same questions that are being mm -hmm. asked over and over again so this page is an easy-peasy grocery list and it has all these proteins so you can just look at this and go, well, my kid's not ready to eat beans. Well, how about cheese? Or I have never tried cheese. There's protein in there's... oats? Yes. What? Like, there's protein in popcorn. There's like two grams of, of protein in popcorn. I um, didn't know oats had protein. Yes, all, it's so many. And then I did another one in oh, here. Oh, man. Look at this. This is, I mean, we've, we put this on our social media before. Like, if I can find it. We've changed the pages so many times. I'm always like, but it's this. So little lion tamer, look how cute that is. And that's protein. There's protein in the popcorn, um, and there's protein in the tzatziki, and it's just like, it just ends up being this fun little, it's a protein plate, yeah. even though it's a veggie plate too, but it's also a protein plate. And so how it just makes it, it makes it, again, thinking outside the box to be able to, again, make food look fun, but it just, it's so easy. You just put it on there and, so popcorn has protein and, and you can I, add and that I, stuff And I in. love a piece of pepper. I don't Me want to too. dip it in anything, but I love pepper. I don't like a condiment. It kills me. It kills me. I just don't. <laughs> um, let's do so I hope that I answered that question. Let's do a couple more questions. Yeah, let's do it. Have you had dinner yet? Mm -mm. We'll go eat after this. We'll go down, we'll go down the block to get steak. Love it. Uh-huh. Um, we'll work on our chewing. And I'll take pictures of him chewing. using the hat. I will not wear the alligator <laughs> hat in public. <laughs> Incorrect. Um, when should a parent seek out help for possible issues? Oh. I have an eight month old that gags eating everything unless it's a super smooth stage one fruit. I know practice makes perfect, but my other two kids didn't have this issue. And how old again? Uh, eight months. Eight months. Okay. So we're in that phase, right? We're in that phase between six and nine months where they're not sure about uh, puree. So you can use that clock method that we were just talking about. Um, but also, again, it's like 
giving these advice and answering questions that are spontaneous, this is not replace feeding therapy, right? This is just giving you ideas and examples and different things. Um, you can always seek out a feeding therapist in your area. Just make sure that they're a speech language pathologist or an occupational therapist who specializes in feeding and swallowing disorders. And the reason why I say that is there's a lot of people out there that are like, hi, I'm Susie, whoever yeah. that, you know, will do feeding therapy and they actually, I have to like go in and undo all this stuff, right? So. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is built the same. Yeah, so, you know, OTs and SLPs, we are specialists in the anatomy from, you know, lungs, which is where food goes into, if you don't know how to chew and swallow, to the brain, and talking about the sensory system and the motor system, and so we are the designated professionals to be able to handle feeding and swallowing disorders. So with that said, um, gagging is not choking, so feel free, mom, that as long as your child is breathing, you're good to go. That's why some of these utensils are really cool is because it, it prevents them to put too much of the utensil into their mouth to elicit that gag. I know that you're saying that they're eliciting the gag reflex on food, but it's a nice way to be able to help with that gag reflex. Now, the only way that we establish and reestablish a gag reflex is to gag. And so in school, in, in, in speech pathology, we all had to go into each other's mouths. And we gag each other every hour of every day throughout our really? whole because we're like feeding each other and doing different things and doing stimulations of you know testing all the there's 12 cranial nerves in the body and they go from the brain they go down your throat to the rest of your body and so we were stimulating those nerves and learning about that and when we worked on cadavers and like what would happen in the mouth and so by the end of my you know, educational career, I had absolutely no gag reflex, like no gag reflex. I got mono like six or seven years later and I was just so sick and my gag reflex was like way up at the tip of my tongue. Yeah. And so it was like all of a sudden I had to work on my own gag reflex to get it back to normal, not where it was before, but to get it back to normal just because there were certain foods too that would make me gag just because of the fact that my gag reflex was so hypersensitive which kids will do they get sick their gag reflex will actually come back up onto the tongue they get better more neurologically um better and then the gag reflex moves back so it's really important for us to challenge those foods and move that gag reflex to where it's right here they gag i'm gonna use my tongue this my tongue <laughs> my hand this way as a tongue they start getting foods here they gag well then the more that we give them, and like you're saying, practice makes perfect, that's true, but also we want to see where that gag reflex is coming. So mom, watch where that tongue is going to be because you may be thinking, God, they're gagging the whole time, but yesterday he gagged here, but today he's still gagging, but he's gagging back here. That's uh -huh. actually improvement. So we want to see where on the tongue that we're actually starting to gag, or is it once the, the food's gone in and the tongue starts to come out, it gags. Like it just, so then maybe it's a sensitivity of that food going over the gum line, just getting different ideas. Um, but the thing that I like to do is just kind of change that up. Maybe it's a crunchy texture like some cereal or a multiple texture like some cereal on the top that just is kind of sprinkled. Or maybe it needs to be like a more thicker kind of a, of a solution um, on the top. So like, um, you know, the first thing that came to mind is like a chocolate syrup, but I know that's not what you want to get, but like something, something a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. um, or a puree that's like a little bit thicker um, that you can put onto a spoon or onto something that they might want to gum to be able to kind of help with that gag reflex. Another thing is, is that you can take a gloved finger or your own clean finger and take foods and just kind of go around into the mouth and just kind of say, it's okay, it's okay, and, and touch the tongue and uh -huh. be fun and just like put a little bit more on the tongue. And, and I mean, that would fun. also encourage, like if somebody put food all over my gums, that would encourage me to use my tongue more. Absolutely, and be like, absolutely. And just exercise those yeah. muscles and let them know like, now I have eye contact to be able to let you know that I'm okay. Another thing, this is gonna be very awkward, but I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna get behind you, Jamie. Is that sometimes if I'm feeding someone that has a gag reflex and I'm just kind of giving them, feel my feel my weight mm -hmm. on here, and I'm just giving you, you ate out of the spoon, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm just giving you food, right? It can feel this sensory movement of this of my body. Oh that yogurt. <laughs> the yogurt was on the spoon a little bit. And so the sensory movement of my body being here and letting you know like you're not alone, we're eating this together, you're eating this horrible food that you don't like together, we're in this together, this sometimes is a great feeding approach. 
is to let you know that I'm oh, here. I'm here. Like, exactly. You're feeling me being here and being present. And instead of take a bite. Take a bite. Yeah. Take a bite. Not that you're doing that, Mom. But just giving other ideas that sometimes that helps with the gag reflexes, lets you know, I'm here, we're breathing together, and you can feel someone's breath. Like, yeah. Right? And so you can kind of, you know, be one with baby and let them know That's that you're right there. That's a very interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Hope that answers um, your question. Here we go. We'll do one more question. Um... Loving these posts with spectrum speech and feeding, way to bring awareness to our field of speech language pathology. And I think that's what's also interesting about this is like after we did this the first time, you were like, so many colleagues were watching this and yes. sharing it. Yes. So the fact that it's not just like right. regular old parents watching this, right. and like people within the field watching it is pretty great. Because that's it takes a lot of specialty to get to a point where, you know, like where I'm at in my career over 22 years of experience where like, ask me a question, I got this, right? It, for those therapists who are just coming up the ranks, right? We want to give them so much information so that, I mean, we see thousands of kids. And so it's like, if we can train a therapist that's knowledgeable in these skills, I mean, they will see thousands of you. And so it's really important. I'm glad that when therapists are watching, thank you for the hearts because it makes me excited about my- We like that doing this. I can, I can actually retire someday and Somebody, somebody, somebody said, I have no idea about this page. This is why I love you. Oh, yay. Him, he's the best. Um, what else? What else? Somebody had a question. Can you talk about like seat suggestions? Which kind of goes in hand with like the trip trap giveaway oh. I'm doing right now. Yes. Which is why I actually did the video specifically today. Yeah. Um, because, you know, proper seating yes. is huge. Uh, so let's talk about just like posture at the table, Yes. what can be done in terms of a trip trap or yes. like whatever a fix. Yes. So trip trap, it's what I have, it's what I own, um, it's what I've used for years, like 15 years. Um, and the reason, and it's still, I mean, it, it's stood this test of time of me seeing literally thousands of children in the, these chairs. It came out um, in 1972. Yeah. yeah. Like it's she's amazing. been around a It's bit. expensive. It's mm -hmm. expensive. Don't get me wrong. But I can tell you, like, I've had children with autism that were extremely violent that fit in the chip chat chair. Kids with poor balance mobilities from, you know, traumatic brain injuries from being in a car accidents that can't really manage being in a chair and, and be able to be positioned in that chair. I've had kids with severe um, anxiety disorders that actually had an anxious event while sitting in a chair and were not able to sit in a chair anymore. You know, those kids that just kind of run around um, and can sit in a trip trap chair because it's a perfect positioning and it grows with your child. So you can constantly move your foot rest yeah. to be able to be in that right position. What I love about it too, is that it doesn't have a, it has a flat seat. So what happens is that there's a lot of seats and you can see them at your kid's school that has this little dip. And what that does is that it just makes your posture kind of be like this. And so then they're like, oh, kids aren't paying attention in class. Because we're lazy because and we're relaxed. Because we're lazy and relaxed. Exactly. It's not an, this is not active seating. No. And it's then very not positive. active seating and not active eating. Because yeah. it's very hard to eat like this. Right? It feels good to kind of relax though. But then it's just like, I'm one with the chair, really. I'm not really engaged in my food. And then can you really see the food? It, no, I mean, it's, it's very like, similar. Like, I just got chairs for my balcony at my apartment. And they're those like you know, zero gravity recliners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even today, I was like, I'll go have a coffee out there or whatever. I lean back and I'm like, as much as I love to lean, lean back and relax, I cannot drink my coffee like right. this. Right. So you have to sit up, yeah. drink that so. coffee, and then you're like, I'll oh, relax for a <laughs> lean moment. Back. So leaning lean back, back is no good. Yes, no, not good. So positioning is very important. And I see pictures of kids when they're like, Parents will say, you know, we do phone consultations. And so parents will call me and I'll do a phone consultation with them. Feel free to, you know, sign up for that on my website. Um, and, uh, you know, and we're talking these through and I'm like, well, send me a picture of your child's, you know, seating. And they'll show me a picture and they're in a car seat or, or 
actually a car seat like on the table and their feet are hanging off or a high chair and their feet are dangling they're not positioned mm -hmm. if your feet are not on the floor you cannot maintain your core if yep. you can't maintain your core you can't lean in for feeding so i did i did an example of this during oh. the trip trap oh, I, didn't I, watch that video. I sat i didn't watch it oh. i showed like how the trip trap works but then i also Great. sat on my bar stool oh, and i was like perfect. dangling legs dangling yes. legs Perfect. And then I was like, but those stools had a foot support. So I yes. showed the immediate difference yes. between dangling yes. versus support. If you want your child to stay at the table longer to possibly eat more foods, fruits and vegetables, then you need to have good foot support. That's yeah. all there is to it. It's because kids will want to get up and move because they are uncomfortable. Yeah. They're holding, the, remember we're going back to breathing. When you have your feet dangling, you're kind of holding your breath a little bit more and it's becoming really difficult to be able to do that. When you got your feet flat on your feet, on the floor and be able to, you know, have good respiratory support for good chewing and swallowing, you're gonna be more willing to try something new yeah. because you're completely, you know, centered. Um, so there's the difference. And there, and there are, you know, not, you know, not everybody can get a $350 right. high Absolutely. chair. Right. So you can do things like phone books under the feet. Yes, or like yes. A suitcase or like. Absolutely. Another chair, a little, yeah. you know, I use those little tiny Ikea stools that you put up to in the kids' bathrooms to be able to get them well, to stand on. Use a potty yeah, stool. Use a potty stool. Well. Stick it underneath there. Yeah. And um, get those kids, you know, a little bit better positioning. Yeah. And it will really, really help. And going back to those questions about chewing, if you don't have good stability you, in, your, in your body, you don't have good stability in your jaw. So it's gonna be really difficult to be able to chew those foods if you don't have yeah. that stable base. And I, I mean, I will say, you know, I always talk about, I've, I sat in a trip trap for, I don't even know how many years at my desk. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, I mean, obviously it's different as an adult because yes. your legs are yes. on the ground, right, right. but the 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 rails yes. back of the trip the trap also mm -hmm. really fit your lower yep. back well. Yep. So you do feel, everybody's like, that's not a big comfortable chair, it's not upholstered mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah. You don't need that. Right. Like, it is a completely comfortable, yes. wonderful seat, even for, I am 6'2", and I weigh 200 pounds, mm -hmm. and I sit in that chair and I'm just like, it's great. It gives you that tactile support, just mm -hmm. like the just like, just like alligator that. hat. It gives you that tactile support to kind of remind you: this is where your body is in space. This is where you need to be to be an active learner right now, and that's what our kids need. We need to teach them to learn about foods, and when they're in the right position, they can be an active participant in that, yeah. and they can have fun with foods. Well, there we go. We've gone an hour of fifteen this evening. Woo! Uh, could, we could do this a lot longer. I could talk However, I. What I do for Louis. I, I, and I love doing this because I learn a lot doing these with you. Thank you. Um, but now I'm really hungry. <laughs> I'm starving and I need a steak. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go eat. Um, thank you all for hanging out. Thank you. Heart this video, share it with your friends, tag your friends, etc. Make sure you're going to follow her page. Um, and we'll be back next month Yes. for um, Autism Awareness Month. And sensory. Autism and sensory. And sensory. Yeah. We're going to talk about both of those, and it's very different. So yeah. it's exciting. And I'm excited because I, I love doing these because it's, you know, it's like I, I told you last time, it's like with Sherry, you know, the IBCLCA I work with, who you know, it's like I, I'm very well versed in that yes, world. Yes. And so it's very comfortable. And it's not like I'm never learning anything from it because I am. Yes. But this is a new whole world for me. Yes. And so I think it's just fascinating-ish to learn about. Mm -hmm. um, so thank y'all for hanging out. Thank you for coming over. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me. Well, thank you for tuning in for so long. And thank you for all the love and support. Yeah. It's great. And uh, we have big things coming up and big things planned. Woohoo! So we'll announce those when we can. Check out that giveaway where the trip trap is. So yeah. make sure that you take a look at that. Yeah. Go enter to win. Um, I'm going to turn this off. Uh, Hi, Laura. Alligator hat. Oh, you can see that far.